Hey everybody and welcome back. My name is Sue and I am from OML Embroidery. Yay everybody, hi. Yeah, everyone's talking about the weather in the chat. Let me know if you can hear me for sure. Hi Sue says Lila. Hello. Are you guys ready for this today? This is going to be really fun. I'm, I, maybe you can hear it. My hands are dry. I'm rubbing my hands together. It's like, yes, this is all about satin stitches. And it's something I think everyone should use a little bit more and learn a little bit more about. So are we, oh, take my ponytail out. Are we ready to start? Because I have a few things. We're going to talk and then we're going to work. So let's go to Satin Stitch. So in this software, and I'm using Perfect Embroidery Professional, and of course you can do it in any digitizing software. The icons might look a little different, um, but they are basically the same things. Hatch and Brilliance, um, PE Design, all of those, and uh, Embird. So this right here, input satin path. This is input satin and shortcuts are beside them. Classic satin path. And this is input steel path. Now, what is the difference between the three? Well, the first two are just simply how you make them, how you create them. And the third one is different from the first two because this one is what you see in like applique, although you can use these ones in applique, but the edges are the same, right? It's the same width through the whole thing. If you change the width of it, it changes it for the whole thing. So these first two ones are um, you can make different widths. See, this part's longer, this part's shorter. Same with this, you can make it, you know, wobbly in and out, that sort of thing. So let's talk about how we make them. Now, satin stitches are a side-to-side -side motion. So side, left, right, left, right, left, right. When you're creating this one, so this is the first one, which is input satin path. It is, you do one side and then the other. So one side, then the other. So for this, let's click on our tool and we're going to do one side. So we're going to do click and I'm just doing left clicks here. One side and then we're going to get to here and we're going to press C and it's going to change. Do you see how it changed? We have a dotted line now and this is for the second side. And then we're going to hit enter and oh, we want to close it first. Hold on. We want to close it. Now we can hit enter. Okay or not are not close okay so i missed i missed it that's fine close and you see my um cursor turns and it has a black dot that's for angles and we're going to talk about angles in a little bit now i can press enter start and stop points and stop points and there we go so that's what i just created albeit i did it difficult the most difficult way because and i'm saying that because i don't like to do it this way i'm not in the habit of doing it some people find it really easy some people don't i don't so when we go into node mode or edit mode however you want to say it the black dots on this software are the angles. So if you change an angle, see what a big difference that makes? The lines of the satin stitches changes. So that's something to keep in mind as we go along. Now this one, the side to side, I know a lot of the embroidery um, softwares use this one and this is what I'm used to just 
this is how I learned um, and I find it a whole lot easier and the motion for it is side to side so you click on one side click on the other so let's go ahead and do that so we're gonna click once and I'm left clicking on everything and if you look down at the bottom left it tells you different things so if you want to you see the width is changing way down at the bottom there and it's also coming up so and you also see the dotted line and that's going to be a real help when you're working on this so we do one side and then look when i move my cursor we get another dotted line so that is telling me I want it here. And look at this one. This forms it. So it's two dotted lines with your um, cursor in the middle. So that is a big help when you're doing it. So one and then finish it. But you can do curves as well. You don't just have to do uh, square bits. And you can make this come in and this come in and look what you can do with it. So it's really flexible and I am really more used to doing it this way. So I'm better at it. I, I, didn't, I didn't have to do a whole lot for this one. So that's how that works. And I think that's pretty easy to do. And it's pretty good side to side. So this is the easiest satin stitch because you don't have to do a whole lot to it. So we're going to pick this one. And in this software, it's called uh, Steel Stitch. And it's just like a running stitch. Click and click and hit enter. And there you go. And then you can make adjustments. Look, the width is up here. You can do the density. You can do the corner type. But that's all you get is just straight. Oh, I see Jackie Cheek, Chris Yost, Isabel's here, of course, Lila's here. Who else? Alicia and Misha. They were the first ones here. I was chatting with them briefly. Um, so angles how you form it if you're more comfortable with this one you know one side than the other it can come in handy for something like this it's a lot easier to do the zigs and the zags i find it difficult so i probably won't do that a whole lot but if you find it easier go right ahead i'm just used to this one so and the the steel or the satin stitches straight satin stitches um, they're great. They have a lot of uses, but if you want to, you know, kick up your embroidery digitizing a little bit, get used to the side to side one or this one. Now, I have a video, a full hour long class in Embered using the side to side satin stitches, and it's a flower one. I'll get you guys the link afterwards. And uh, it'll take you through everything step by step by step on how to do it. And uh, we'll be doing more on it, but in case you wanted to get ahead. So let's talk about forming stuff. Look at this. So we've got some drills to do. And actually, this is really cool for doing practice work. So I found these uh, built in to this software. And there's a lot of them in here. Look, this gives you good practice. So I just popped a couple of them up because I thought it's really good to practice. Now, if you don't have this software or you can't find them for some reason, I mean, let's look. This is a rectangle. This is a rectangle and you're going to add a few nodes. Let's go ahead and do that. I was just going for the convenience that they're in there. So we're going to go to our shapes because we're getting pretty good at shapes now. And we're going to do a rectangle. So this is how you can make your own drill, I guess you could call it. We're going to do a rectangle shape and then we're going to grab a circle and we'll grab another circle and it doesn't have to be perfect. You could also copy and paste. I'm going to do it this way just for a little more of a challenge. And then we're going to put a bounding box. So left 
click and drag and select them all in that area. And we're going to go to weld and look what you have. You have this right there. How easy is that? So um, how do you work on this? Now this is the first one. So it's this. If you can see where the numbers are, one, two, three, and it goes along like that. So you can do it that way. And just like kooky shapes like this, it's really good practice. And it's one of those things that you actually do need to practice. So let me see. I don't know if I can do it on this one, but we'll give it a try. And I'm gonna go ahead on this one. So one, two, th three, and I'm gonna hit enter. And we're gonna change to the dotted line. Um, and I'm gonna cheat and I'm gonna do points um, instead of curves because that's too many clicks for me. There and then down and hit enter and it says branch I'm gonna have to look into that and look our start point our stop point and there we go and that's what you get now if you're looking at this okay the angles are kind of gooky I I didn't do it quite right let's zoom in again there's an angle line and see what I did I went up here instead of stopping here so your angle lines are all kind of messed up. Um, but you know, when you go into node mode, you can literally fix everything. So let's, let's try it again with a way that I know it a little bit better. So we're going to go up to here and this is a cool shape. And let me just check the size. Yeah, it's a little bit big for satin stitches. Normally we'd switch it over, but let, let's do it anyways. So let's pick my favorite and a whole lot easier, the side to side one. So it doesn't matter where you start. So either one, whatever you're more comfortable with. And we have the dotted line and then this way. And I'm gonna take it to about here and the two dotted lines with your cursor in the middle and click there and then what oh there we go from side to side now this one we can kind of have a little fun with this so um if you make it crooked like this see this line that's formed right here that's our angle line so if you do it this way which you certainly can look at how my angle lines are going and there is a time and a place but not today so let's just make it go see now i messed that up so i'm going to go back space right i'm going to bring this over a little bit more and bring it up to the bottom again and i'm going to go straight up here now we can curve it later if we want but i just want to get the basics through here and it is seriously just practice that gets you to this point so you can see how the angle lines are going on so good and we're gonna go here and I made a mistake but that's okay and we'll finish it we can finish it like this and make it look really weird and I'm gonna hit enter and I get my start and my stop, and then it's going to generate. So look what happened. Look what happened here. So remember, I put the line sideways. This one is much better. They were up and down. And I completely, totally made a mess of this one. So maybe we're looking too close, but if you move it back, this one looks really good, really so much better. I mean, it's not the greatest design at all. If I make it smaller, then the satin stitches will stop splitting and you can see a little bit more. 
These are more even straight up and down. This is gonna cause more pulling because if you look, the line's going, there's how many? One, two, three, four, five, ten, say, going longer. It's gonna pull your fabric in more. Where this one has less of a chance, this one is gonna end up with um, uh, puckers everywhere. Misha says, is that how you get the rounded corners? Yep, you can do that. Yep, we're going to be working on that. Um, you can make them chiseled at the end, whereas if you are doing this one, the only option that you have for the ends are flat, like end of story. It has its uses. It is brilliant. It's a stitch you need to use, the straight satin stitch or the steel stitch. Um, but this is... It's a little bit harder, but it really looks nice on stuff. Now, one thing I want to talk about is splitting satin stitches. So um, lettering is probably the best example I can give you for this. So I'm just going to bring up letter H, good enough, or letter A, sorry. And I'm going to make it bigger, and it's probably bigger. Oh, that's probably pretty good. Look at all the underlay to hold that baby together. 31. So we're not at its limit. Let's see. And a little bit more. It has the recommended sizes, but I'm going to show you what happens once you oh, look at all that underlay. Oh my goodness. That's a lot of underlay going on. Now we can go back here and we can make some adjustments as well. Look, you can stretch them out and do everything. Um, let's make this really exaggerated because a lot of people want to make huge letters. Now, first of all, we have a satin split. So what does that mean? That means the satin stitches are splitting in between. See this little divot? And it will do that. These satin stitches aren't split, but boy, are they ever long. Um, they'll do that so it looks a little bit, bit better. Sometimes you can use split satin stitches on purpose. And you can see here, it gives you some texture and it can be a nice effect. Um, but what it is, is it's not going from side to side. It doesn't go one stitch. Thankfully, always make sure on whatever digitizing software you have, make sure you have your split satin because your machine will make horrible noises as it's going across. Also, the pull comp compensation is going to go crazy because of the pull back and forth on this so it's not cool. I always suggest if you're going to do lettering and satin stitch splits that you probably need to do it uh, smaller or you need to do it um, in a different um, font or you know stitch even. You can there's so many other things. Fill stitch. When satin stitch doesn't work, fill stitch is usually the answer, but not always. Because, of course, you can do whatever you want. Um, these satin stitches, I just changed the font on it. These satin stitches are crazy. Look at this, like, block letter A. And it's split too much. Can you see? There's barely anything on it. And this letter is huge. Yeah, almost, wow, almost six by five. No, you can, you should never do that. When you stitch it out, um, it's going to look exactly like this and worse. You can't fix that other than changing the style of the lettering. Now, let's make it a little bit less tall. So we'll go to about here and see the changes. Now that, uh, I don't care for it, but you could get away with that. You could get away with it. Hey, Jackie Cheek says, wow, monster letter. People do it. I see it. I see it that they do it that big. This is why we have 
guidance right up here or in your manual if you're on uh, Hatch and most of the other software, they tell you the recommended size. Um, because although you don't want satin stitches too big, you also don't want them too small. So let's continue playing with our A. It's still split, it's still split, and that's because this number right here, we're way over. The recommended is right here. So this is the biggest it wants you to go. So let's make it a little smaller. And that's looking good. Now you see how all the satin stitches removed itself, the, like the split parts. So now this is going to be nice and solid looking. Um, again, if you have a little bit of splitting, that's fine. Now what happens when we go really, really small? Well, that hardly looks like an A. And everything is jagged. And this center part of the A is probably going to fill in. So basically, you're going to end with a blob. Um, you really, really need to use uh, fonts that are made to go this small. And what do we have it at? Yeah, that is pretty tiny. So let's try this size. So a third of an inch. Uh, you could get away with that maybe, but... Yeah, this is much better. This is way much better. But it'll make better lettering if you understand. Alicia, blob of thread. It would be. It would be. This is also when you make something really small like that, and there's a ton of stitches. Say, for example, people do this with stitch files. If, if you take a stitch file letter... Because um, people think that they're fonts. If you have to download each letter by itself, it is not a font. It is an alphabet. And it is an embroidery stitch file. So if you have a stitch file, and stitch files are made for stitching, working files, such as we're doing right now, they are made for editing. So if you're doing a stitch file, and this has you know, 5,000 stitches on it, and you make it this small, it still has 5,000 stitches on it. So this is how you're going to get a bird nest. This is how you're going to break needles. And this is how a lot of things could go wrong. So you have to be careful and mindful of that. What about people say they just di digitize the text they just digitize all the text they use. How would you set up a basic letter? Um, well, if you have, I always tell everyone that the built-in fonts in your software, whatever software that you're using, is, are the best ones to use. They're made for embroidery. They're designed for embroidery. You can buy some that turn into built-in fonts. Now, BX fonts for Embrilliance are fantastic, um, but you have to remember they are stitch files. But Embrilliance also has built-in ones. So we can play around with this one because it is the working file. So using fonts that are too small for the digitizing is a surefire way to break a needle and damage your machine. Yep, yep. Can you stamp on the large letters? Um, that's a hatch thing, stamping, I think. Um, you can, but it's going to get a little lost. Um, it's going to get a little lost in your split satin. So... Um, a little bit of split satin, uh, in my opinion, I think it's okay, but I would generally recommend that you convert it to um, fill stitches. We'd, ha we'd have to break this apart um, first. Alicia says, Sue has an awesome video for digitizing letters. Yes, 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 it is. Um, how to connect them, how to do everything on it. It's, it is really good. Now, for letters, in general, they should be satin stitches, unless they're really huge, and then you go to the different kind, you know, fill stitches, 
or applique is always an option, always an option. So we're not building letters today. We will though, we will though. We're gonna get on to it. We're going to talk about, look, I got more things for us to do. Now again, these were built in with the software, but this is just a rectangle. That's all you need for a rectangle. Does changing the underlay stitches make the satin stitches change or the satin stitches are going to stitch the way it is unless you change it? The satin stitches are going to stitch with the angle how you want, how you've set it up. So when you take this one to the machine, you're going to have all these wonky side angles and split stitches. It's going to look like this, basically. The You do need underlay for the satin stitches and depending on the size, now I know uh, hatch, when you make the letters smaller, the underlay automatically change. It does it in Perfect Embroidery Professional too. Um, but an edge underlay is always nice. It helps a little bit with keeping the edges nice and neat. And usually a zigzag helps reduce the push-pull factor on it. So, but remember, what you see on your computer it, it has no physics to it. So this, what you see on the computer is your best case scenario. This is, you know, in your mind what it looks like, the way I see it. When you take it into your machine and you're stitching, you have the physics of the thread the push-pull, the kind of fabric, the stabilizer you're using. And all of those things factor into how good your satin stitches are going to look in the end. So if you falter, if you take this, for example, and this is quite big, the, it's going to have a lot of push-pull compensation on it. If you stitch it on a piece of you know, cotton without, without stabilizer or without the proper stabilizer, this is going to end up being uneven, perhaps even a little bit smaller because it's all going to pull in. So you have to take in all the factors to it. And the idea too with the satin stitches, um, our Lynn usually says that she loves the satin stitches at the end because they cover up all the mistakes, you know, trimming mistakes and stuff like that. And that is exactly true. So when you're doing it in applique, it's covering, you know, one half and then one half, but you still don't want to make them look too big um, because they're going to pull all over the place. So you don't, you don't want that. So here's one, make yourself a little rectangle. Remember, we're really good at shapes now. And if you're not, go back and watch all the videos. There's tons of them. So this is good practice for whichever satin stitches. Obviously not the steel or the straight satin stitches because that's kind of cheating to do it that way, but you, you should be able to click four times and do it. But let's let's take a, this one. This is a really good one to start on because we're gonna start at the bottom and go to the top and then back to the bottom. Now you can go all the way over here and they're gonna be straight stitches. Uh, it's gonna be all even and enter, enter, enter. So that one looks good and it's pretty close to the right size. But if we want to play around with it, let's do this again. And getting your mind around these are, it's just practice. And remembering the lines that go up and down um, are your angle lines. So let's, let's have another good example. If we, you know, say going around a corner, we want it to go, we're going to do it in a minute, but see how I'm doing it here. So that's going to look really strange and we're going to, we're going to make a mess. I'm trying to make a mess. So all of these angles, I mean, wow, what do you guys think this is going to look like? It's not going to be nice. It's not going to be nice for sure. Um, let me just turn the volume down on my Mac because there we go, because it's screaming 
at me. There we go. And this is what you get when your angles aren't right. So can you fix it or start it again? Well, you can fix it. This one is a labor of love, but I'm grabbing the angle lines and making them straighter. Now, there are times where you want to might you might want to have, you know, some angles going on and we're going to go into that. But for something small like this, see now I made it better, except for right there. Um, I would probably just start it again and the edges are crooked. So you'd have to move them all. Um, these ones in here, I would delete. I would delete them. So let's go into the good one that I made and this is where it ends. So I'm going to move it over a little bit and, uh, we can't add anything to it, but we'll, we'll, we'll be doing more stuff. So let's try another one that's a little more complicated and, but it's not really, it just has different steps to it. So you can do it on the first one if you want, and you can, uh, do it with this one. I like the up and down. I just, like I said, I'm used to it. What's going on? Uh, underlay stabilizes the fabric in preparation for the satin stitches to help keep the edges straight. Um, it does. There's different kinds of underlay that you can pick from and zigzag is usually applied to satin stitches. I like an edge run as well because it helps hold everything together, but definitely you need underlay. Think of it as a foundation. You're building, you're building your embroidery. The first thing to keep the whole thing stable is stabilizer. Then underlay. Underlay, you know, makes everything even and holds it down. So your embroidery looks good. So underlay is very important. So let's work our way through this one. We're going to go up and then we can go all the way to here. You don't have to do points in between, but this one is going to change the angle. So there we go. Bottom, top, bottom, and then this is a different angle. Top and bottom and top. So let's hit enter there. And do you see how the angles work? How cool is that? they could be a little straighter at the end, but that, that is how it's done. I'm going to move this away and let's play with it in a different way. Cause I'm just trying to show you how important the angle lines are. So we could work up to this angle change if we wanted to, or we could mess around with it. I'm going to mess around with it and see what we get. So this is bottom, top, and bottom, top. And let's go and do that to, now let's just do this one normal. And let's do this one normal as well. And we can see the difference. Super nice and smooth, yes. So the way I did this one, which um, does work, it's not necessary for what we're doing, but you see it puts the stitches halfway and halfway because I, I added more angles to it. If you missed what I did, look, there's three different angles. And what that does is um, you can see actually when I select it, uh, a little bit. It's hard for you guys to see it, I'm sure, but there's more stitches in it. So it's a little more reinforcing because we're just working up to the angle. When you're doing curves, this is what we're going to be talking about. Then there's nothing wrong with this one for the straight. I mean, it's perfectly, perfectly fine, but you can see how you can change it. Now let's do one with uh, we're going to add to it. So we're going to do one, two, and back to the bottom. And I'm going to make it a little bit wider. I should have checked the size a little bit wider here, just kind of at an angle. Let's go up to here and we're not going to do extra angles, 
but this one we're gonna go here if you make a mistake just click on backspace it works for most of the software and we're kind of messing with angles here but let's see how this looks and this right here is the benefit of learning how to do um, satin stitches because this can be a decorative finish now look what happened my satin stitches split where I made it wider and it does give it a different look I do not care for it but it does add texture it looks okay let's make it a little bit smaller and it doesn't look like anything but you can see that it's wider and it's narrow and wider and narrow and I think you could add you know even a scalloped effect or if you're going around something it adds to it it kicks it up quite a bit and it's amazing so those are examples of absolutely nothing but it shows you how important the angles are and it does take practice but like i said i find the side to side motion a whole lot easier so for this one it's just practicing the steel stitches so you just do one click around but what if you wanted to do this smaller obviously with these satin stitches how would you do it well you're gonna start I like to start from the bottom it just if I get lost it makes it easier for me and then click here on number four back to number one look how easily I'm doing this and this will be whoops this will be too big but that's okay well I didn't mean for you to do all that there and if you get lost you remember that your cursor in the middle of two dotted lines means top so then back to the bottom and what do you guys think it's gonna look perfect uh, except for it's way too big but I said that in the first place so you can have a satin stitch in different shapes as well now that would to me that would be really cool as an eye because it has depth to it you can't do it as big as as I had it but you could make um, you know different shapes and it's higher on the edges and lower in here in the st satin stitches have split so I think it looks um, pretty cool so like I said even though I don't most of the time I don't care for the split satin they certainly have a place you can use them and they look amazing Dawn has a tendency of using them um, a fair amount and they look really good because they add the texture whoops sorry needed a drink so instead of going around the outside let's do this again um because like i said it's practice one two i started from the top so i'm going backwards but i can tell what i'm doing because of the dotted lines so back up to the top and then down look my cursor is um in between two dotted lines so i know what's opposite to what i just did and there you go obviously two big satin stitches split um but that's okay so you can pull out um as many shapes as you can for practice this is the best way of doing it you just be mindful of um uh, sizes if it's really really split um then you need to make it a little bit smaller to see how well you did so alicia says so many anita good designs you split satins they have grown on me to look yeah i know i love them too and that's why i keep saying that um you can use them and in certain cases i will say they look amazing they look absolutely amazing in what Anita Good Design uses them and I like them too. So any shape that you have, um, you know, we've got the hexagon, which is that one. 
pull out a whole bunch of shapes, zoom in, and practice away. So obviously not so much on this one, but if you need to practice your points, um, it is fine. Uh, but, you know, it's good to practice the other ones. So whichever one you're more comfortable with, um, the result is the same. You have satin stitches on the first two. Um, it's, it's wonderful. You guys are going to be watching for satin stitches now. So angles matter. So, uh, we talked about this already, but this is a really good example. So see how the angles turn and they go right to here and then they get all wonky. This looks way better and it'll stitch out way better than that. So let's have a look at to see what happened with the angles. See what happened? So this is fine. It slowly turns to here. You could move this one back a little bit more to make a even better, a smoother transition. Right at the top, you know, generally in the middle, up and down. And then we want it to go back a little bit to the end. So that is way better, way, way, way better than what we had it. So be mindful and you don't need a gazillion uh, angles on it. It's if you have a whole bunch, then you have to move a whole bunch and you chances are you will be moving them. So it's kind of like the nodes, the points that you put down when you're doing a curve, you want one, two, three nodes. If you're going to do 500, then it's not going to look as good and it's going to be harder to adjust. And, you know, we adjust things, we work on it. So then you could do some letters and we are going to be working more on this, but I just want to show you the last sample part I have. So I just took a circle and I filled it with satin stitches. So obviously if you have something like this, and I'm going to tell you how big it is. Yes, it's almost four by four. So picture your four by four hoop. Yeah, that's not going to work in any, um, in any way, shape or form. So that would fill your four by four hoop pretty closely. That is not meant for satin stitches. So let's make it a little bit smaller because that's a solution. And this is two by two, so it's half that. And that's too big for satin stitches. How do you fix these? You convert them to fill stitches. That's what fill stitches um, are for, to fill it up with even solid stitches when you can't with the satin stitches. So this one, split satin, I gave it a yellow maybe. Um, it does work in some areas. Um, I think it looks good. And that's one by one, just a little over one by one. And this one, I give it, you know, the two thumbs up. It's beautiful satin stitches. You can see, let's zoom in on these two a little bit. Either, either or works. This one with the split, again, it gives it depth and it kind of looks cool. And this one has no split and it still looks cool. So you can pick from this one or this one, the maybe or the check mark and never pick these ones because it just doesn't look right and your machine will not forgive you for it. So next week we're gonna work on more complicated um, pathways of it. Now this one is lovely and numbered and I'm going to work on making graphics for you guys to work on stuff like this. But this one is curved. This one is thicker here and thinner here. So what's that? Just a clarification. We're not talking 3D stitches. I don't know what you mean 3D stitches. Maybe you mean puffy foam. And the answer is no, no. Is that what she means? No, puffy foam is a whole different way of digitizing. I mean, it's not that difficult to do, but you have to think 
um, a different way to be able to do it, but that's getting way ahead of ourselves. We need to learn the satin stitches. So if you don't have a um, setup like this, the, again, this was built in, just pull out a, a letter S and you can practice. So this isn't the greatest font. I don't really, oh, click on it and you can see all your fonts. I want something a little more rounded, maybe like this. Yeah, well, you could do that. It's, um, I'm going to change it to the letter S because that is, we're going to talk about the serifs, which are these blocks here. We're going to, we're going to work on that another time. Not, not today. Whoops. I don't want to throw too much at you. Apply. And that one also has serifs. So pick a non-serif one like this one. This should work. Karina, thank you. It's nice to see you, Karina. So this is a nice one and you don't have to follow what it is exactly. You can make certain parts thicker and certain parts thinner, thicker here and make it look closer to this. But I'll have graphics to give you guys for next week for practice. And then after that, hopefully we can, um, um, we can work on some lettering and keep practicing with our designs. And I'll see if I can find a, or make a good graphic where we incorporate the, um, um, placement and connections when we're doing it. Valentine Hatch 3D is a whole different thing that has multiple satins on top of satins. Yeah, um, E4 has a stitch like that and it's just insanity how many times it goes around, but it has its uses um, made more for commercial machines, that sort of thing. So no, not 3D, we're just talking plain, ordinary, change your width, um, and you know, kick it up with your satin stitches. You could simply fill this large S with fill stitches or anything like that, but doing it properly in satin stitches makes a difference. The other difference is, you know, um, outlining, and I'm doing quotes, outlining, um, outlining to cover up and make everything even. You have a little more, you know, cover up power with a satin stitch as opposed to a running stitch. If you have any push pull, your running stitch is going to leave um, gaps on it and you don't want that. So generally, please don't under uh, outline in a just a running stitch because you'll be disappointed when you stitch it out. So remember, remember all these things. Angles matter. Size matters. Uh, don't laugh too hard, Karina. The style mat matters and the width matters. So lots of ways to practice. I hope you guys will, uh, you know, have a go at some random shapes just by putting them down like this one with the rectangle and the circles. That would be amazing practice for your, what do we call them, like uneven satin stitches, uneven edges, that sort of thing. So let me know, are there any questions from you guys? Anything? Those stitches invite problems. Yeah. I think the 3D stitches are meant to do the same thing as, say, a puffy stitch, but without the puffy. Um, that's my guess. Uh, I have stitched them out. They can look good. Dawn actually used it for a freestanding, um, name he did and it worked fine, but it was a lot of stitching. Could you do the flower with a center out stitch? I don't know what you mean. Like center without the center. 
Uh, yes, you could. For sure you could, but you'd have to go. I would do the side to side. Um, probably give yourself a template to do it. I don't have a machine yet. I've only been digitizing, but I'm learning that because it'll look good on my computer doesn't mean it'll stitch right. Yes, stamp that on your hands and put a sticky note on your um, monitor. Um, a lot of people say, well, I can digitize because I do graphics. Hey, good for you. You probably can, except there's rules, and I'm kind of a rule breaker, but there's certain rules that you have to know that the computer doesn't show you. It's not going to go into the physics. Um, so you would not get too long on the satin stitch. No. Change your, the safest way of doing it is changing your software. There'll be settings. Cindy, I know you use E4. There's a settings that split satin. And that way you know about the size. Now look, long satin stitches is hard on your machine. They kind of make a loud noise, but they're prone to get caught. They're prone to get broken, pulled out the whole bit. And they do not cover very well. Most of the time when you have long satin stitches, you can see the fabric underneath. Now, if that's something that you want, that's fine. But generally, no. So if you set it to split, um, then you know, you'll you think, oh, okay, that is too big for satin stitches. Or, hey, I like the split, whatever you're thinking. Um, but if you don't want the split, you have to make it a bit smaller, but it keeps you aware of the size of everything because you would really hate to stitch out this and you could see the fabric underneath. So Misha says bad digitizing can ruin a machine. Yep. Yep. Flowers look good with the ripple stitch. Yep. They sure do. That's uh that's a lot of good fun, but it's not a satin stitch and we're talking about satin stitches. So for your homework, I would like you to create this and you remember how we did it with shapes. We're good at shapes. Um, so would the ridged, ridged ones be too large of a stitch? It's the ridged you mean by this one, Cindy? Like for example, this red one, this has split um, split satins, like this one looks nice and smooth, other than the terrible angles that I played around with. This is nice and smooth, and this one is split satins. So instead of the machine stitching from side to side, I can almost hear it, it's going to go part way and then part way. So they are satin stitches, but they are split, you know, kind of, kind of in the middle. And then you won't have any of the problems that I said. So if you like split satin stitches, there are a time and a place for them. Great. If you don't like them, then you need to pick another stitch or you need to make it a little bit smaller. Now, see when I made it small, it didn't like my angles there because they're not right. When I made it smaller, the satin stitches aren't split anymore. So yeah, make sure, whoops. <laughs> I don't know what I did there. Oh, let's just delete that and pretend it didn't happen. I, I clicked something that I shouldn't have. Um, it's, it's really good to know. It's really good to practice. So for homework, say five shapes, something like this, you can do um, one of these, a square, kind of like just a weird rectangle that you're going to add some nodes and bend it around and smooth curves and work on doing your satin stitches and making them look good. So it would be cool. So, or would you have two objects in join? Um, you could join two objects with a satin stitch, but it's not going to look great because it's going to, um, they're different sizes. Usually if you have the same side, you can merge them. Um, but yeah, this is an excellent lesson. I appreciate it. Um, Cindy, if you have more questions, 
about this. I know what you're getting at. You're using E4, which is a little bit different than this. Send me um, a PM and we will help you out with that because Cindy King is doing commercial stuff. So her software is different than this. So it, it does, E4 does way too many things. It's awesome, but it's made for commercial. So it's different than home embroidery. Um, and we're going to keep working on these. So five, five shapes. Make sure you um, post them in the group so everyone can see your beautiful satin stitches. You can also play around with the ends and try to get different angles and see how it all works. So awesome. If you have questions, you can ask, other than Cindy, you can ask in the group. Cindy, you can send us a PM. And um, next week, we're going to keep going. So make sure you do practice your stitches because we're going to take it up a little further. And um, it, we're going to do like different shapes like this where it's going to be a little more difficult to do, but not impossible. So do your homework. Thanks everyone for watching and I'll see you guys on Saturday for our new projects. Right? Right. Bye everyone.